welcome back to the 401 files i am super excited for tonight's video and what may come of it we're heading out we've got about two hours left of light before the sun drops below the horizon and the area that i'm heading to is deep deep woods woods with a lot of history we've had murders there we've had ufo sightings there abductions even animal and human mutilations but that's not why i'm going the story that I'm going there for tonight, you guys will find fascinating. Whether it's true or not, it's completely up to you to decide. Let's get on the road, let's get going. For some people, a fear of the woods is based on a fear of the unknown. Modern society provides very few opportunities to get back into nature. So people who have always lived in urban areas may not be well acclimatized to being in large wooded areas. For those of us who are acclimatised to these wilderness areas, we often like to believe that we know all there is to know about the different life forms living on this planet. Owls, deer, foxes, badgers, bear, wolf. Very rarely do we ever entertain new ideas or evidence that would support something new and undiscovered. Thankfully, there are still people out there like myself who believe that life could operate and exist on many different frequencies and in many different versions of our own reality. Okay guys, so I think I'm in the right location. Um, I can tell you a bit more about why I'm here. I'll go into more detail obviously throughout the video, but really briefly, I had a bit of a tip off a few weeks back. Um, I think it was through email or maybe messenger, but it was an interesting story that was um, told to me by someone who follows me here on the, on the YouTube channel. And um, whether this story is true or not, is up for debate. I've spoke to people, different people, who say different things. Some people say that this story um, was over-exaggerated. Some people say that this story is 100% true and the guy just doesn't wish to talk about it anymore because he's scared of the ridicule. Um, I will leave that up to you guys, as always, to debate between yourselves what you think is the actual, the actual truth of the story. Lily, come. But either way... We're going to get there to this location where it all happened and we're going to absorb the night together. And I'll tell you the story when I'm there. It's absolutely terrifying, if true, even 1%. So one of the things that has struck me straight away, and I mean, I'm no, no stranger to Dolby Forest. This is literally on my doorstep. So I've been here quite a lot over the years. And one thing I will say is on a nice day like tonight, or like nice evening, sorry, the hustle and bustle here is noticeable like there's children screaming there's kids running around uh, people on bikes there's a bike park behind me with lots of jumps where you know you get people on there as well having fun so it's quite a noisy place but there is nothing tonight you might hear lily i've attached the lead to her at the minute so she's walking about pulling that along the floor um but other than that there's no people i'm literally the only person here um, and that's really what is standing out to me at this point there is no one here other than me. Even on the drive in, I never passed any cars coming out like you usually do. And I'll just show you the car park really quickly. This car park, bear in mind, is really quite a busy car park. There is no one. <laughs> it's like there's been a post-apocalyptic event and I'm literally the only survivor, it's weird. That's my car. You can hear Lily, she's coming coming up across the road now. Um, I'm here, silly Billy, I'm here. Good girl. But yeah, weird, guys. So stupidly, I never saved the images from Messenger. And now that I'm here in the location, I never anticipated that the signal would be this bad, school by error. So I've not got the images on my phone to keep looking back and forth from, which makes it very difficult trying to orientate myself to the landscape and find out where the starting point is to this track. But 
signal is coming back and forth um, intermittently so the next time I get a bar or two on my phone I'm going to quickly save the images and um, go from there but I do think I'm on the right path I don't feel like I'm lost I feel like I'm heading in the right direction and I should be there very very soon strange how the mind works i've spoke about this quite a lot actually in previous videos but things just pop into my mind that are just so weird like i imagined walking into an opening like this and imagine right for one second just seeing someone floating with their arms by the side the head cocked right back looking up to the sky just floating off the ground like max out of stranger things in that opening right in front of us Imagine if you saw that, that would be creepy, would it not? <laughs> I might even superimpose a person on a picture and try and recreate that. I'll take a picture now just in case I do get around to doing that. Still walking down the trail and I get it. I get that trees can fall, I get that trees can snap and sometimes those trees can fall in very peculiar um, formations. But just look at this one and you guys down in the comments box tell me what you think is this weird or is this natural to me it just doesn't look natural but i don't believe in tree structures so what do i know i'm actually going to walk over there it is quite um rough terrain to get to that tree structure or those tree structures but it might just be um it might be like a, sh a foreshortening effect because i'm so far away it looks like the tree structures are all side by side and when we get over there we might find that actually they're quite spaced apart oh that's what i'm hoping if i get there and the ash shoulder to the shoulder snapped roughly at the same height of the trunk that would be quite creepy so wish me luck That is creepy. That is extremely creepy. Lily, come. Lily, come. Lily, come. Come. So, like I've already said, guys, we're here at Dolby Forest, a national park notorious for strange things, UFOs, cryptids, the usual stuff. And this behind me is one of the trails that cuts through the forest here at Dolby. And it's usually built by the Forestry Commission to allow people to enjoy a good day out riding on their bikes. However, some people who have a bit more ability and a bit more skill need something more challenging. 
and um, these people tend to build their own trails called off-piece trails that cut through the woods. You'll see them wherever you go in any national park. Now, technically, they're not allowed. But having said that, they're also not frowned upon too much that you'll get disciplined or punished severely if found building one. Which segues me nicely to where we'll begin this story. So a few weeks back, I started to receive a few um, Facebook messages from one of our subscribers here on the channel. And he's a keen rider, keen mountain bike rider. He comes here quite a lot to Dolby Forest to enjoy some of these off-piece trails. And I'm not sure if this was told to him from a friend or a friend of a friend, but this is how the story goes. So it was here then that he decided to build the off-piece trail and also decided that he would, he would stay back late one night to try and get the trail finished. So basically you can imagine there's this guy, this keen mountain bike rider. He's got his spade to build the jumps, maybe a few snacks and a drink and his bike. Literally, that is it. And then nightfall closes in. He started to hear strange things around him through the trees and he became really uneasy, felt like he was on edge and something just felt completely off. Something didn't feel right. These are normal feelings and emotions that you would expect to have when you're on your hands and knees building jumps in the pitch black dark in a wood. But anyway, he carried on and um, he began to hear very strange things happening around him throughout the trees. And every now and then you can imagine he would stop and have a look around. Um, but the feeling of anxiety became so much that he thought, no, enough is enough now. And um, I'm just going to get the hell out of here. Something really strange is happening. So he jumped on his bike and he started to head down the trail. And as he did this, something on two feet, bipedal, was running alongside him. And he says that he was biking through the woods extremely fast and this thing somehow seemingly was keeping up with him now depending on who you speak to about this story you will get a different version some people say that the guy only heard strange noises and decided to get the hell out of there and over time the creature dogman um, type character was added in other people will say that no the whole story really did happen and the mountain biker no longer wishes to speak about it because of some ridicule that he's um, experienced. Who knows what the real version of that story is? One thing is very, very clear is that this mountain bike rider did hear strange things, was freaked out and felt like something was completely off at the time on one of these trails. I don't know which one's true. I don't really care which one's true. All I care about is that there are strange reports still coming from this area and that keeps me fascinated. Mosquitoes are out, right on cue. So the guy who built the trail um, has reportedly built other trails as well through the forest and he gives them all these names so people can find out which trail they're on. The trail where the experience happened is known as Bummer Wolf Trail. And obviously it goes without saying that people believe that is where it got its name from because of this experience that he had. So when you look at this scene in front of us, it just looks like complete random chaos that happens spontaneously. Like these trees have just fallen randomly um, and just happen to fall coincidentally onto other trees that make suspicious looking shapes like X's and tree bends. But I'm gonna try and make you think outside the box and I'm not trying to insinuate anything here. I'm not trying to make you believe anything. I'm just trying to make you see things and think the way I do. A lot of these trees have been snapped really, really high up on the tree trunk. For example, there's a tree over here. We can see that that's been snapped really high up on the tree. And again with this one. really 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 high up on the tree and we can see where that part of the snapped tree has gone it's landed there on top of the fully bent tree now is that enough to completely bend that tree over i wouldn't think so because it's the same thickness as the tree that is bent 
So then we ask the question, has that been snapped off and placed there? Again, I'm not sure, I don't have the answers, but it's one way of looking at these things. Like, is that coincidental? Has all this been done completely at random? Or is the meaning behind it like a lot of people think? It's just another way of looking, guys. And um, I always try to encourage people here on the channel to step outside the box and entertain new ideas. That's just one of them. Why have they been snapped so high up the tree trunk? And why have they all miraculously or suspiciously fallen into these uh, these formations that people claim mean something? just taking a moment to absorb this transition between day and night this is prime time for your eyes and your brain to start playing tricks when the light is the in-between not quite day not quite night so it's always nice just to sit that period out and um, see the transition through there are a few speckles of light coming through the canopy above me but there's roughly only about 20 minutes worth of light left and after that time's up, it's going to be complete darkness. Um, yeah, just thinking back to the story that I told you guys previously in this video about the mountain bike rider building the track, deciding to stay over late one night to try and get the job done, when he um, all of a sudden has a really big rush of anxiety and starts hearing strange noises. I did mention while telling you guys the story um, that depending on who you talk to, will depend on what version of the story you hear and i think even if we go with the very uh, basic this guy was in the woods at night heard strange noises story i think if we go with that one even that's terrifying and if we add to the fact that um the other version has a bipedal dogman type creature running alongside him then again absolutely terrifying I was thinking about something earlier on and I was thinking about um, why we don't have solid evidence or proof that these things exist. And, you know, I don't think that we are meant to understand. I honestly don't think that we have the capacity to understand. And I'll give you a little bit of an analogy. Um, if we take a fish out of water and we expect that fish to walk on land. It doesn't matter how much that fish wants this. It doesn't matter how much this fish tries to make that happen. It's never going to be able to happen because he's not built for the task. Like, he doesn't have the capability of being able to walk on land. And that's like us in these fields of UFOs and cryptids and the paranormal. We so badly want for this to, to happen and to find some way of proving this. But we don't have the capacity, the capability. It's not in our brain. We aren't wired up to understand it, um, grasp the concepts fully. And um, so we, I just don't think that sometimes maybe we'll ever know or understand because of that reason. It's just not wired up in here. Maybe it was at one point in our um, ancient history. Maybe our ancestors had the capability. But over the years somewhere, um, that door has been locked and now we have a very, t a very hard time understanding. We can accept, we can say, yeah, I believe these things exist. But when we start asking the real questions as to why, where, and how come, it's very hard to answer those questions. I hope that one day we can, I really do. But again, it was just a thought that I had earlier on. Maybe we do not have what is need, what's, what's needed up here. You know, the more I come out to these places and uh, these hot spots, the more I start to question whether it is this area or is it just a chance encounter? 
people might say, well, what's the chances of having a chance encounter time and time again in the same location? Because some areas, granted, do have a lot more sightings, a lot more reports than others. Is it just that all these people coincidentally had a chance sighting in the same area? I guess that is possible. Or is it something to do with the area? And I guess that's possible. The reason I come to these hotspots isn't because, you know, I think I'm ever going to see something or experience something. Um, I think, quite frank, frankly, that I could come to this area um, forevermore and never see anything. But if I head out to the places that do have the highest number of sightings, surely that gives me a better chance than, you know, sitting it out for, for years on end in a place that's never had a sighting. It just makes more sense. And it is intriguing. It's intriguing to think why this location, if that's what it is. If it is the location, why? Why here? And you know, there's nothing really special, like uniquely special about um, Dolby Forest. The North Yorkshire Moors. Um, Benton Cliffs. There's nothing really special about these areas. You can find very similar locations all around the world. And some of these locations, as far as I'm aware, um, probably don't have one reported sighting. But, um, yeah, really just pinned her ears back and started looking up into the forest, which is always unnerving. One thing that keeps me going when I'm in these locations is pitch black. Um, or it's the dead of night and I'm sat against a tree like this in a place that has many weird stories coming from it. One thing that always pushes me forward is that I think to myself, logically, what other idiot would be out here right now doing this? And that's good, that's great, because it gives you the confidence to stick it out. But the one time you do see someone out here, You've, it's kind of answered your own question like what idiot would be out here and that becomes a terrifying thing because realistically you should never see anyone out here like I should literally now be the only one here and so if I do see someone it's going to be panic stations you know I was just listening to um, one of Justin Chernopesky's videos um, from Mountain Beast Mysteries and his friend was talking about his experience that he had with a suspected Bigfoot creature. And he was talking about how he was in this thin layered shelter. And while he was asleep one night, the material pressed against his face because something had pressed it down. And um, a hand with fingers started to feel around the contours of his face. A very, very large hand. He said one of the strange things was that he never heard the creature leave the scene. Like, so he's laid there now after, after experiencing this. And as far as he's aware, the creature is still stood there outside the tent because he never heard it leave. He never heard a stick snap or any leaves rustle as this thing walked away and left the scene. That's Lily, my dog, by the way, making a noise. But yeah, he never heard the creature leave. And th little details like this make me believe strongly, or even more so, sorry, that there might be an extraterrestrial element to Bigfoot. I've said this for a long time now, and it's took me a long time actually to come to that conclusion. It wasn't something that, you know, I just tried to be different with and thought I would start saying this to, um, to rub people the wrong way. I never thought that. But when I've looked at the evidence and when I've looked at some of the similarities between the two phenomena, it's striking. Like there are so many things that people say over in the extraterrestrial um, abduction field that can easily be brought over to um, to the Bigfoot field. And that, that was one of the details just there that we've heard. How this thing was able to leave the scene. Almost as if he were just um, beamed up into the sky or teleported or went through a wormhole or something. You know, any other animal walking through this stuff. You're going to hear that. It's very, very difficult to walk unnoticed. It's impossible. I'd go as far as saying it's impossible. Unless you're levitating across the floor and you're gliding, 
it's, imp it's impossible to walk through this location right now without making any kind of a noise. And again, um, I'll bring you back to the point that I was trying to make. It just makes me believe that there is an extraterrestrial element to Bigfoot and some of, some of maybe these other phenomena that we that we hear about. just been listening to something walking through the uh, walking through the forest something of size I could hear it pushing out twigs and overhanging branches and also stepping on like logs and things like that and I'm not insinuating that that's a, a dogman or a werewolf by any means but you know when you come out to these places and you're reading stories like the one I've just read previously and you know that things do keep coming from this area that are quite odd or quite strange. It's hard to think of anything else but dogmen and werewolves. I guess it's a bit like when we watch horror films and then we have to sleep with the light on or we go around locking the doors because it's on our mind. So although it's a deer, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> In fact, I'm confident of that. But um, yeah, your brain will convince you otherwise. I'm often questioned about why my experience remained buried in the back of my mind for so long. I have no shame in saying that I don't have the answer to this question. What I will say is that for me, this didn't even feel like it was in the back of my memory or even hidden away somewhere inside my subconscious. This wasn't in my thoughts at all. Not until something happened. Something happened to me that must have triggered this memory and catapulted it forward into the conscious memory. Whatever that something was, or why that day, I'll never know. I've heard many different theories as to why this memory could have come flooding back to me after so many years. But for me, I feel like something lost its grip over me that day, or maybe the effects of something wore off. I'm not 100% sure, but I would compare it to the effects of like a local anaesthetic, but with much more intensity. Whatever the case may be, I relived that day like it was projected right in front of my eyes, and I was stood there at work 20 something years later, re-watching everything unfold again for the very first time. It was that vivid. <laughs>